In this video, I'll go over how to edit and export script in order to export a bit more complicated information to the Stream Deck plugin. Uh, for this, I'll use the JF17 UFCP as a guide as that uh, does not currently have an official export script. Uh, and we'll look at adding the text strings that are shown in the UFCP display um, being exported back to the Stream Deck. Uh, for space here, you can see that um, I just overlap the, the arrow buttons with the displays, uh, but it works fairly well on the Stream Deck and allows you to get the full functionality fit on a Stream Deck XL. This video will be a continuation of my previous video of identifying display information for modules. Uh, where we were investigating them in the DCS BIOS Lua console view. So we'll pick up where we left off from there. So for exporting, I really just want this, the text of this sixth row here. And what we can do is these uh, forward slashes, we can split the string um, by each of these using a script within the uh, a split function that's included in the DCS export script by SDA, which I also have installed. So to do that, we can wrap this in that function. And we'll split this by percent %c. Uh, percent %c is uh, a Lua pattern, which means any control character, which would include this forward slash. Uh, and since this is the third window, uh, we'll rename this variable text three and return that. Um, and these can be named whatever. And if we execute that, now we'll see that text three is a, a table, Lua table uh, with eight elements and we can see that now we have the one string we care about here as the six element so if we instead of return just the six element of that table we now have the string we care about uh, so another thing that we may want to do is actually split these into two four character um, strings so that they can fit a bit better on Stream Deck buttons. So um, this works fine, but let's try splitting them as well. And what we can do is let's create a left-hand side. And this we can say is the substring from character one to character four. And the same for the right-hand side. Be character five to eight. So now if we try return to the left hand, sorry, I forgot the need to only look at the sixth element here. So there we go. So now we have four characters. BNG, and if we instead return the right hand, we should see approach. So that works well, and now let's test it where we had. So for the full string, um, and if we instead look at the first row, And we'll just rename these all text one. And we see empty characters. So I just want to make sure that if we try to access characters where they don't exist, if it should still work. So if we do left hand. That looks to return an empty string, which is good. And if we try this for the second window, 
next number is four. If we do left hand FPA, that works. And this only has four characters total and it returns an empty string. So that works as well. So using these, we can access either the full string or the kind of left hand and right hand four characters separately if desired. Uh, one final test is if this is powered down, what does it actually show? So if we shut this down, and let's delete these for a second. Uh, so now we see that we have no uh, indice at six. So if we try to access that, it's a nil value. Uh, so what we can do here is for our left hand and right hand sides, is only return a value if they exist, otherwise return an empty string. So if text to does not equal nil, then we can do our substring filling. and add an end to the if statement. So this should work fine when there is a nil. Otherwise, if, if you don't do this, then the Lua script will, will fail and, and crash and it won't be able to do anything. Um, but this should allow you to uh, export the values when they exist, but when they don't, it just returns an empty string. So moving to the export script part, uh, for this I'll be using a export module script that uh, Luperian uploaded to the ED forums. Uh, and this is really helpful since he's already gone through the effort of adding all the clickable data, um, button IDs, and the LAMP uh, values as well uh, here. So what I've done is gone through to the bottom of the script uh, where these uh, Icarus high importance and low importance functions. And if I expand this out, uh, I've added that parsing of the string text to um, this low importance update step. And I rearranged it a little bit from what was done in that uh, interactive Lua console. Uh, so you can see I created four uh, variables which hold the string for each text window. And here I just did the split and then extracting the sixth element all in one line. Uh, so this is the eight character value. Uh, and then after the fact, I checked if it's nil and replace it with an empty string if it is. Uh, then this section is where this is actually pushed up the UDP message uh, and sent to the Stream Deck plugin or uh, or Icarus. Uh, so what I decided to do was add the the full eight character strings as well as the left hand four and right hand four character strings. So uh, what I did here is just picked some numbers um, of IDs to uplink them, uh, one two thousand one through two thousand twelve, and uh, for the Eight character ones, I just use these unaltered, but what I do is this string format uh, and 
what this basically says here is, is has Lua uh, add any padding of spaces um, up to eight characters uh, for this. So um, in the example of uh, where we saw earlier here, this, this only shows up as four characters and, and then nothing. So um, this would add an extra four characters here. Uh, and then this helps with alignment for like some of these characters uh, where there's maybe only three are listed. Uh, we'll add that fourth. Uh, so I do the same thing for the left hand and right hand where I pad four spaces. Um, and then within here, I'm doing that substring of one through four, or five through eight. And now moving to the Stream Deck plugin, you can see that I've added uh, some buttons here with displays, and I just use an image of uh, four empty um, spaces here from the UFCP display. Uh, and that's why it's useful for the uh, the space padding here for four characters for each of them. Uh, and the only other thing I did was kind of set courier, since it's a uh, mono space text format and a color that looks similar, uh, and then filled in the DCS IDs that I added to the export script um, here. So now when we change in-game, uh, these will update accordingly and be spaced here. Uh, and so since they are split, if you do have things that cause something to show for both, it'll just be split across there, and but it still uh, looks appropriate. One more scenario I found while testing this after recording was that if you select a uh, side of the text to enter and update this, you'll notice that it actually only shows the right-hand side window uh, in the element 6 and then has this wind fill uh, in the end. And you can see that when it, if you click execute a lot, you'll see the, the blinking cursor it shows up here if you time it right as well. So uh, the export script that I'll upload in the detail uh, description below um, we'll have some modification from what I showed there to account for this. Um, and as you can see, there, there's quite a bit of testing you'll probably need to do in order to take advantage of uh, these